Maybe you don't suck at retouching, but you suck at lighting. Let's get into this. A lot of us are struggling when it comes to retouching our photos. I will show you guys real life examples. I'll take you behind the scenes on a photo shoot, break it down. Hopefully some of you guys have an epiphany moment of this is why I kind of suck at retouching. So before I take you guys onto the photo shoot and in Photoshop and showing you guys, you know, everything, I want to show you a real life example real quick in this talking head segment. So I'm going to just get this little light here. I'm under NDA for this light. Uh, it comes out in a month. So stay tuned for that video. So let's just put it right here. You can see the hair is kind of adding like a streak of light here then the rest of the lights not hitting my face and then we got mixed light right here when you go to retouch this good luck no amount of retouching is going to make this image look good why because the light that you're putting on the face is just creating battles for yourself also when you go to retouch your image you're like uh how come this isn't looking good it's the lighting you know versus if you know i treat this light more as like a rim light and then I just let this light shape my face. You can see how the key light right here is giving structure to my face. It's enhancing my cheekbones. It's giving us a little Rembrandt lighting here. If this was an image and I was going to retouch it, you know, all the light looks good. Only thing I'm gonna have to retouch is blemishes. That's it, like little fine wrinkles and blemishes. So now let's get into the actual photo shoot. I'll show you guys a before, which is natural lighting, which the image still looks great, but it's gonna take a lot more work to retouch versus when I just throw the light in, you're gonna see all the retouching is basically done because I properly lit it. So you guys can see these are some of the images here and these have all been retouched already. For example, you can see in this image, the lighting wasn't great on her. I'd say, I mean, it looks decent, but compared to this, you can see the lighting is really just carving out her face and it's doing most of the work to where I only had to go and fix the blemishes. All right, so these are the raw images straight from the Nikon. I did edit them. This is natural lighting here. And some people might be like, oh, this looks great. And I'm confident to say, you know, with enough editing and retouching, I couldn't make this look decent. But let's go into the lit image. Look how much more easier this already looks like it's going to be edit. Let's break down the two here real quick. Before I even go to retouch these, I already know some people are like, oh, that model has amazing skin. She's a professional model, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter. You could apply this to any human being or subject. As long as you light them well, and you light according to, you know, what fits best for their facial structure, this applies. I don't want to hear none of that nonsense in the comments. See, we have some blotchiness here. This isn't a big issue, but say if this was for a fashion commercial campaign, some cameras, you know, it makes your skin look way worse than they really are in real, per in real life. See, we have this little highlight here. It goes to shadow, another highlight. Then we have shadows right here. On the tip of her nose, there's a little bit of a shadow. There's highlights. There's just mixed shadows everywhere. Natural daylight blasting of that window is bouncing off the red barn, causing this red glow here. And then it goes back into the dark. And then we go to the neck and you see there's, you know, this happens a lot with, you know, every human is there's different skin tones between the face, the neck and the body. We're getting that here. But let's go and we look at the lit photo. All of a sudden, a lot of like that blotchiness from, you know, the actual natural light. All of a sudden, all that gets muted out. Why? It's because we're using a light to actually shape the face. This is the point. This is the whole point of this video here. You might take this photo and be like, this looks great. And you go and retouch it. And all of a sudden it looks kind of bad and soft. And uh, you can tell it's been retouched versus if you just light it correctly, all of a sudden you're like, oh, that was way easier to retouch. I learned this like six, seven years ago when I started to do lighting and I realized retouching took a fraction of the time. I'm manipulating light to shape the face. So now let's go into Photoshop and let me actually retouch these and you guys can see how much more easier the lit image is gonna be. Before that though, I'm gonna show you the light real quick that I use. Small Rig did send this to me, so I guess this makes them a sponsor of this video, but I was genuinely using this light on that shoot. It was in the Bronco, I needed more light. I was like, oh shoot, I got that little small rig light stored in my Bronco. Let me go grab that real quick. And it came in clutch. It's a small rig RC60B. It's a 60 watt battery powered light. Whole kind of kit that it comes with here. And all I did was pair it with their uh, small little soft box here. You can see we go all the way to 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. You can go and use special effects. See all the extra control that you can get out of this. You can see how bright this is. Now, when it comes to retouching, this isn't gonna be a retouching tutorial. There's a million different ways to retouch an image. If I'm being lazy, like the way I'm about to show you, this is usually the way I would do it. I have other videos I did years ago about retouching and it's pretty much the same thing, but this is gonna be the extra lazy way. So basically I'm in a frequency separation group right here. Uh, so whenever I go and sample color, 
You can see it's gonna paint on there, but it's gonna keep the texture in there. In real life, we don't see faces like this. We don't see all these different like blotchiness on the skin or anything like that because we have movement, we have crazy dynamic range in our natural eyes. And as you're moving, we're capturing different light. And so our eyes and our brains are able to compute, you know, a, a specific visual reference to someone's face. Where when you're taking a photo, it captured that instance in that one moment. And all of a sudden, all these like unnatural blotchy blemishes or weird blotchy lighting, whatever it is, all of a sudden that gets into your image. But anyways, I'm gonna sample this. I'm gonna start just feathering this in there. I'm just trying to make the light look more even on her. The light is what's making it look like her her like skin's blotchy when her skin's not blotchy in real person. It's just bath lighting. I wasn't controlling the light at all. So you see, I just wanna increase that bridge of light on her nose there. We have that weird shadow on the edge of her nose, which that's just coming from mixed lighting. You can see we have a red line right here, then it gets darker right there. So I'm just gonna go and try to brighten that up. You can see we have some discoloration underneath her eye it looks a little bit more gray and then we have these red tones down here we also have this shadow right here causing a distraction on her face just because that red barn reflecting light and then i'm going to try to blend these tones so again it's more grayish goes into pink into red and that's it so that's like a pretty natural retouch there <laughs> after so you know that doesn't look half bad now i'm gonna go in and i'm kind of fix the contrast on her face a little bit so now i'm basically contouring her face contouring contour contour whatever you guys get it so this right here is basically the airbrushing, I guess you would call it. And then we're doing tone fixes right there and then contouring. So we're just adding highlights there. There you go. That's a retouched image. Let me save that. Now, before I open up the lit image to go retouch it, let's look at the unlit retouch photo versus the lit photo unretouched. The lit version still looks way better. Again, I'm trying to prove the point and really drive it into your guys' brain right now. As long as you can light and key your subject and shape the light, it's going to do most of the work. You can see this still looks better. It's just, there's way more natural contrast. Her face looks a lot more better. There's a lot more shape to it. Where on here, you know, we're kind of losing her still. But yeah, the lighting looks a little bit more smoother and softer. But again, I could spend 30 to 60 minutes retouching this where on this, it's already a better point just because I lit it. I'm gonna do the same thing, but you can see it's gonna be way faster. So pretty much all I'm doing guys is just really just blending little parts. Even if one of your subjects do have a lot of blemishes, I'm telling you, just lighting it and lighting accordingly to wherever their blemishes are, it's going to make your life so much more easier when it comes to post-production. And there we go. That's all I'm gonna do. We can do before and after. That's before, that's after. You can see that was way faster, way less work, like way, way, way less work. So now we have the retouch version, the non-lit version, the lit version. If anybody says they like the retouch version of the non-lit, you're, you're, you're fooling yourself here. Again, here's the unretouched ones on both versions versus the retouched ones. Like this looks professional. See, it was the same techniques and retouching, but it just took way less work. That's the trick. So that's pretty much it, guys. I haven't got to do a cool little video like this in a while. Just a quick little tutorial and some photography stuff. And for anyone that's asking, I shot it on the Nikon ZF and a Voigtlander 21 millimeter and a 7 Artisans 50 millimeter, which I end up liking the Voigtlander 21 millimeter so much more than the 7 Artisans that I went out and I bought the 50 millimeters. To be honest, this ZF, I was not expecting to like really care about this camera too much. But the moment I put my hands on, I was like, huh, this is this is pretty cool. And then now finally doing a proper photo shoot with it. I'm, I'm just, uh, it's, it's weird just cause it gives you that film experience and it kind of forces you to slow down, you know, be a little bit more thoughtful. I'm not using autofocus lenses on here. This has great autofocus on it. If that's not the point of it for me, it's like getting that, that film experience, getting that true photographer hands on, um, like moment with yourself. It's kind of hard to explain the people that are truly passionate about photography and not technology. You guys get it. The technology guys that collect cameras because you're into tech, that's fine. Uh, you might not get it, but uh, I'll do a video on this soon and why I'm using Voigtlander and why they're so cool. How I'm using an E-mount lens on a Z-mount. This is the E-mount lens. I use all my Sony lenses on this and it works just as good. It's pretty wild, but that's for another time, another video. That's it for this one. Peace. <laughs> go around on the camera. <laughs> I'll put that on my portfolio. Ah. Yeah,